In this episode, I'm going to show you how we went from this raw photo with lots of potential to this. Hello amigos, I'm Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. I'm starting a new series in my channel taking a raw photo and going through all the steps until it's completely edited. I hope you like this series. Now, we're going to be using primarily Adobe Lightroom, which is my main tool, but at times we're going to use some of the plugins from Topaz, from Nick, from On One or others to try to give our photos a special touch or when we need to get rid of high levels of noise, for example. So let's start with this image. Now, this photo is already completely edited and I took this image during a vacation that my wife and I had this past October in the state of Maine here in the US and we wanted to see the fall colors and on the tail end of that vacation we went to Mount Desert Island which is the home of Acadia National Park and as we entered the island my wife saw from her side of the car this view you know this creek with the trees and the clouds and she asked me to stop so we turn around we stop we were able to take some images and while i was taking images my wife noticed that these two kayakers were taking final instruction from the person running the equipment and were getting ready to go so i waited for them to get in position and i was able to take some additional shots and i think the two kayakers just give that human touch to this environmental shot now this is the final image now we started here now, this is the raw image, right? It lacks contrast, it lacks detail, it has not been processed. So let's talk about what I wanted to do to this image. This image has a lot of potential, but we need to get that potential realized. So a couple of things I wanted to do. One is I wanted to make that fall colors pop, you know, get them really bright and prominent on the image. Second, the sky, while well, there are some clouds, I wanted to add a little more drama to the sky. And finally, I wanted to get a little more of our attention, our eyes, also going into the two kayakers. So let's see how I did that. So we're starting with this image. And the first thing I always like to do is to go to the lens corrections and apply remove chromatic aberration, which in this image we're probably not going to have but enable the profile correction. You can see how the image shifted slightly, especially when you're taking wide angle images, there is a little bit or sometimes a lot of distortion, lens vignetting, and Lightroom is very smart. It knows what type of lens and camera you're using. And by enable profile corrections, it applies in software corrections to get what the image needed to look like from the beginning. So this is without and with the lens corrections. That's step number one. Next, I want to crop this image. I want to make sure that the kayakers are centered. So I'm gonna crop it slightly. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna put the kayakers here towards the bottom and the center of the image. Something like this will work for me. Next thing I want to do is change the white balance. So I'm gonna go to the basic panel and I'm going to go to a cloudy white balance. That just gave us a little bit more warmer colors. And now I want to do my global edits. And for global edits is the exposure looks fine. I'm going to add a little contrast. I'm going to reduce the highlights. That already brings more detail on the clouds. I'm going to open the shadows a bit. I'm going to create a white point holding the Alt key and moving to the right until I see that and I come back a bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks, holding the Alt key, moving to the left until I see some black points. And that already adds quite a bit more contrast to the image. And as you can see, this is the before and this is with the few edits we already done. It's already looking a lot better. Now, I was telling you I want to make the colors pop and an easy way to do that when you have full colors is to go to the calibration panel at the very bottom of the develop module and 
I'm going to increase the saturation of the blue channel and you can see how it makes the yellows and the oranges pop because there's always a little bit of blue on those colors. Okay. And I'm going to go the same with the reds because we have reds and oranges and those have quite a bit of red. And I'm going to, I don't want to go overboard, but I'm going to go a little bit like that. And we're already making those fall colors pop. Now, this is already looking so much better. Next thing I want to do, was telling you, is I want to add some drama to the sky. So let's go create a mask. We select masking. And in this case, we're going to select the new artificial intelligence driven select sky. I'm going to select that. It's going to take a few seconds to process. In my old computer, you know, my computer is about five years old. It takes about nine or 10 seconds. If you have a new computer, you know, it can take just one second. And as you can see, it did a great job on creating the mask for the sky. Now, what do I want to do to the sky? I'm going to reduce the exposure a bit. I'm going to reduce the highlights. I'm going to add some clarity that even gives us more. And let me reduce the exposure a little bit more. Now, something that I'm not liking is this area right here where we have this dark area near the edge of the image. Now, I'm just going to crop the image a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to the crop tool and just crop a little more and get rid of that. And now, you know, I don't have those dark splashes of cloud near the top of the image. It's looking so much better. This is where we started. And this is what we have so far with the few edits they have done. And it has taken very little effort. Now, I want to give a few additional touch. One is I want to guide our eye to the two kayakers at the bottom. So I'm going to create another mask. And this time I'm going to add, I'm going to create new mask. I'm going to add a radial gradient and put it right here. And I'm going to darken a bit. Basically, oh, I'm darkening the inside. I need to invert it. Basically, I want to darken the image a bit. And that guides the eye to the kayakers. I'm going to move this up. And here you can see if I turn it off and on. It's a very subtle change. I don't like to be heavy handed. You know, this is too heavy handed. That's not very real. So I just want it to come down a bit like a 0.2 or so of a stop. Now, what else do I want to do? I want to add additional detail to the kayakers. So I'm going to add another mask, this time with a brush. I want to make sure I have the auto mask selected. I'm going to make my brush small. You can use the square bracket keys or sometimes the, the wheel on your mouse. And I'm just going to paint on the kayakers. Just trying not to go over. You know, I'm going to be a, a little fast. You know, you need to be a little more precise when you edit your own images. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to increase the exposure a bit. I don't want to go overboard, but increase the exposure of the kayakers. Add some texture. Add some clarity. And that just gives it, you know, a little bit more pop. So they stand out a little bit more. And again, the changes need to be subtle. So far, so good. Next thing I want to do is we did a very good job with the colors on the trees, but now I want to add additional contrast and detail to the trees. So I'm going to create a new mask also with a brush and I'm going to make a big brush and I'm going to paint basically on the grass and on the trees and I have the auto mask turn on again you can be a little more precise with your mask but I'm trying to do this quickly and here we have the mask now what I want to do with these trees is to I'm going to increase the exposure a bit 
I'm going to increase the highlights, reduce the shadows, and that gives me a little more contrast. And now I want to apply some texture and some clarity. And clarity it really is mid-tone contrast. And here you're going to see this is before and after. You know, we just made the trees pop more prominent with the extra detail given by the texture and the clarity. So this is without and this is with. So if we review, you're going to see we started with this image and we have this image so far. So this is already looking so much better. Final steps is I'm going to add a vignette. So I go to the effects portion of the develop module and apply a vignette. You know, you need to go no more than minus 10, sometimes minus 15. You don't want to go so much to the left that the corners become very noticeable dark. So just a touch to guide the eyes towards the center of the image. I'm going to go to the detail panel and now I'm going to do sharpening. To do sharpening, you need to be working at 100%. So I'm going to click and here I am. And I'm going to hold the Alt key. It turns into grayscale as I move and I increase my sharpening. And usually I do something between 70 and 80 points. That's a good amount of sharpening as I visualize the image. I'm going to go back. I'm going to apply masking. If I move the mask while holding the Alt key to the right, you see an automatic mask being created and the dark areas are not going to get sharpened. Basically, I don't want to sharpen the clouds or portions of the water on the creek. Only the trees and the kayakers. And that is a way to limit in also the noise because you don't want to add sharpening to whatever noise is on the image. This image was taken at ISO 640, so there's not a lot of noise. So I'm just going to increase the noise reduction and luminance a bit for any small noise that may have been there. The final step, and it's something that gets me very often, is sometimes we have dust spots, or sometimes our lens wants, you know, as clean and we had water spots. In this case, there was a little bit of drizzle. So a way to do that is we go to the heel brush. I'm, I turn on visualize spots and I can see some minor spots. So I'm just going to fix those. You know, sometimes you don't see the spots on your monitor until you make your image really large. But if you print the image, they become very, very noticeable. So just three minor spots, maybe one more here. So we're done. Here's the image that we just edited very quickly. And here's the image that we started with. So let's do a quick review. What do we do? You know, apply our lens corrections to remove any distortion that we had. Did our global edits and that already added significant contrast to the image. We took care of the sky. We added a lot more color and pop to the trees with a combination of the calibration panel and painting clarity and texture. And then we guided our eyes to the kayakers with a combination of a radial gradient to get the light right on the kayakers. And we also added exposure, texture, and clarity to the kayakers. So we started here and we finished right there. I hope you like it. I tried to do it very quickly to keep it interesting. And I'm going to continue on this series of doing raw edits, using Lightroom, and the ecosystem of plugins that are available for Lightroom. Well, amigos, I hope you like this raw retouch or raw reveal on how we took a raw image from beginning to end. I leave you here with this video I did recently on why our prints sometimes come out dark out of the printer and how we fix that. And please help me grow the channel, subscribe, give me a like, send me your comments, and I'll see you next time.